The woman known to history as Christine de Pizan was an incredible literary luminary who shaped much of the literature's paradigms. She is responsible for the introduction of the, the very idea of suspense in the novels. Her genre expands to not just novels, but to poetry, history and several others. Her most important work is the book of The City of Two Ladies, which is an attempt to rewrite history. Her most important works were The Tale of the Roses, The Book of the City of Ladies, and The Book of Treasury of Ladies. In this video, we'll explore four reasons why Christine de Pizan wasn't a feminist, namely the religion, the deceptive nature of feminism, Christine's taking of a man's body, and finally, the impact. In conclusion, we'll discuss how Islamic doctrine is very similar to that of Christine's. Throughout many years, the feminism has changed its discourse from the first wave to the second and then, to the third. It has gone from seeking equality to, in some circumstances, superiority. The first wave feminists may not all agree with the third or second wave feminists. While Christine, a medieval conservative Venetian lady, cannot agree with modern day feminists. In addition to this, each year more and more feminists identify themselves as non religious and even atheist. According to The Guardian, a research was conducted. They surveyed 1,300 feminists. Nearly a half declared themselves to be non-religious. On the contrary, Christine de Pizan has taken robust conservative stances for her argument which are backed by religion. She defended her faith against wrong interpretations. Quite often, she'd quote personalities from not just Greek mythology, but from biblical discourse as well. She describes her contemporaries' argumentation as unchristian and immoral. Unlike feminism, she argues for the right of women to be acknowledged not for the equality of men and women. Lula McDowell Richardson illustrates this notion in his book, saying in quote, Her method of attack is rather unexpected, for far from arguing that women are equal in intelligence, culture and education to men, or demanding for them equal privileges educationally or politically, she begins by stating that those who are combining to slander and malign her sex are guilty of base ingratitude. End quote. Biblical discourse has had quite an influence of Christine de Pizan's works. She often lays her stress on the nature of the Christian jurisprudence. In 1945, Marie Rosier published a thesis called Christine de Pizan as a Moralist. In it, she examines the allegorical nature of Christine's works and alludes that she wasn't just a mere compiler, but a Christian moralist. Also, author Tracy Adams alludes that feminists who idealize Christine de Pizan may be disappointed. Unlike modern-day feminists, Christine de Pizan gave her university lectures behind the veil or a screen to as is said, avoid the distraction of pupils from beauty. In some circumstances, Christine takes an even more conservative stance, saying that suicide is more preferable than a woman to be unchaste. This proposition may enrage some feminists who believe in the freedom of choice and proclaim, my body, my rules. Feminism cannot be dismantled unless we talk of its origins and founders. Oftentimes, the names of Mary Wollstonecraft, Elizabeth Stanton and Rebecca Felton are displayed. Let's examine what they particularly actually stood for. If we examine the origins of the first wave feminists, we often hear the name of Rebecca Felton, who is also known as the very first female senator of the United States of America. While modern-day feminists may revere her for feminist stance, they might not know that she was a white supremacist. In addition to this, she also has been known to enslave people. Not only that, she also has been reported to have said that black people should be lynched. Such colonialist representation of feminism is quite uncommon today, and thus these dark secrets are often kept under the rug." End quote. The cult of womanhood linked these virtues with white and middle and upper classes, excluded the black women from the definition of womanhood. On the contrary, again, Christine de Pizan was generally considered to be a humanist. Averse to the colonist-motivated first-wave feminists, Christine refutes her contemporaries by simply the Christian theology. Instead of the espousal of such ideas, she laid out the notion of taking on, end quote, the heart of a man. She became a perfect embodiment of this when her beloved husband died.
Simone de Beauvoir spearheaded the second wave feminism, and is viewed as an important figure. De Beauvoir believed marriage to be a curse. In her book called The Second Sex, she rejects the patriarchal structure of a society and called for absolute equality. She treated the biological significance of little value, and viewed that they were all created by men, and in favor of men. The book itself is much regarded as a great feminist resource and is quite often quoted. It gave rise to many critiques in the European and American intellectual circles later in 1950s to well into the 1980s. Many critiqued her as someone outdated, and many simply rejected her. De Beauvoir was influenced by his boyfriend, Jean Sater to write this book. This raises an important question. Was feminism created by man? Also, her letters to her boyfriend, Sater, she often explicitly mentioned her lesbian relationships with other people, and sometimes shockingly with even her students. This has disappointed many readers of her book. She even had a pact with her boyfriend to have multiple affairs during their relationship. In her literary novels, she is also critiqued for her poor representation of protagonists. She did not believe in the concept of strong women like Christine de Pizan did. Instead, she critiqued it. On the contrary, Christine viewed marriage as a sacrosanct to be protected from all unlawful affairs and immorality of such kind. She was a firm supporter of loyalty on both sides. She loved her husband completely and often regarded in quite good terms after he had died. Taking a closer look at statistics right after the feminism's waves, we find a rapid decrease in marriage. According to Pew Research Center with association with time, it turned out that the marriage rate was only 28%, as opposed to 68% in the 1960s. Fewer marriage rates also led to more affairs and even more childhood Again, problems. We find Christine de Pizan stands to be quite clear. She argues for the status of marriage to be valued and cherished along with loyalty and affection. She describes marriage as a sweet thing. Machu of Boulogne viewed marriage to be a curse on men too. In other words, he viewed that women were immoral and they make men's lives miserable. Today, the vice versa is argued for by the feminists. The feminists, on the other hand, refuse marriage by stating that men are immoral. In that case, both views are very same. On the very contrary, Christine promotes Christianity's stance on marriage which opposes both the views of Machu of Boulogne as well as the second and the third wave feminists. In addition, her marriage had quite a lot of influence of her literary career from which she benefited a lot after her husband's death. This is argued for by the author, Suzanne Venker. She maintains that feminism isn't really based on equality, but on matriarchy. She views feminism to be a threat to conservative minds. The marriage rate have decreased, and that results in unlawful affairs. In turn, it gives rise to an epidemic of childhood problems and the lack of a proper guardian. Also, it has made men shut, and very oppressed. Christine's life was very averse to this. She didn't promote the abortion of children. She raised her own children alone and made sure their futures were secured, although time was not always in favor of her. In majority cases, the life and the rights of women that Christine argued for are very familiar with the Islamic doctrine. Averse to modern-day Christianity, Islam is more closer to Christine's worldview. Like Christine de Pizan, Islam argues that women are not like the men. Islam and Christianity are both Abrahamic religions and observe similar traditions. Although Christianity has slowly left its norms after the French Revolution and such movements, Islam has maintained its stance for quite long and is determined to be the same. Therefore, many of Christine de Pizan's views match that of Islam. For example, Christine gave her university behind a screen. The same is the Islamic position on the matter. Also, we never see a miniature of Christine's without a veil. Similarly, the veil in Islam is quite emphasized and has been put on by females throughout different centuries, 